Good morning, everybody. Welcome here at Holy Trinity Stapleton. I'm Charles Sugden, rector here. Thank you, Sheena, and the music group for that start of worship uh, before we join as a congregation to formally uh, worship. I'd like to also welcome those who are watching the recording of this and thank my wife, Kath, for setting all that up. Thank you, for Ben, for doing the PowerPoint for the words of the service. There aren't the songs on there, so you will need a hymn book. If you haven't got a hymn book, then wave a hand and Linda or Malcolm will come over and get one for you. So some notices just um, before we sing the same song that the music group just finished with, because um, we're going to sing that at the beginning and the end today. There is after this service a short half hour meeting and um, we'll be discussing the way ahead for our celebration weekend. Hope you can stay for that. Sorry we're not yet into refreshments, but you're always welcome to bring your own thermos. Cats brought ours. <laughs> Sorry to make you jealous, <laughs> but do, do bring them um, while we don't have refreshments being provided. There is a prayer meeting tomorrow night at seven o'clock in the hall, and this is a really important parish prayer meeting. It is our monthly meeting, but we will be focusing for a good part of it on praying for the situation around and in Ukraine. Just to say on that, that my, my wife is no longer going east in May to uh, Moldova and Russia. She realizes that um, it's unlikely that the airspace will be free for a start. And so the proceeds of the concert that we're giving on the 19th of March will be towards the Ukrainian relief the DEC, uh, Disaster Emergency Committee Fund. So do put word around um, March the 19th. It won't be a sombre concert, um, but it, it will allow lots of space for reflection. I'd just like to say how we are responding in this local area. A neighbor of ours here, just across the street, has wanted to initiate um, local Ukrainian relief network support. And what this is to do is to prepare for when and if we have accommodation to provide for Ukrainians in this area of Bristol, so that we're straight up and ready. And so there is a, a web page. If you go to our Facebook page, um, as a church, then you can get onto that web page. Things are in their infancy at the moment in terms of planning, but just to say it's not a charity yet, it's not constituted, um, but we are just beginning to mobilize people um, in order that we could do that sort of accommodation. If you are uh, wanting to give food and clothing, then I believe there is a depot in Longwell Green, but go to the Ukrainian relief agencies locally through the city council and they should be able to provide you with that information. <coughs> Fruitfulness on the front line. Our Lent course begins this Tuesday. I know various groups are doing different things during Lent, but if you haven't got a group to go to and you'd like to join a Zoom group, then that's being uh, Zoomed. Let Ruth know. Give a wave, Ruth, <laughs> if you'd like to go on that um, and discover how you can be even more fruitful right where you are day by day. The um, other group is meeting in person and that's on a Friday afternoon in French Haver. Again, notify Ruth, she'll link you up with that group. Okay, well, I know that in very serious and dire times, it may seem odd to sing a song like, My Lips Shall Praise You. And a, a lot of our hymns and songs today are really quite soft and gentle and yet, what did Paul and Silas do in prison in Philippi when they had been beaten unjustly and put in chains? Answer, they sang hymns of praise. And this is a decision of our hearts to worship the Lord and to declare him Lord in the words 
if you turn up number 896, we just see he's my great redeemer. In other words, he can redeem any situation. He is the almighty savior. Ultimately, he saves. He is able to save. And so with the restorer, and so with all that he brings of peace when we are in distress. Let's stand and determine to praise the Lord this morning. the lips and the heart moving together. That's going to be the theme, actually, of the sermon, how lips and heart and hands move together. Um, we're going to sing the next hymn next, which is 446, four, which is asking us to, um, asking God to feed us with his word this morning. Number 446. Four,
be seated. The peace of the Lord is a bit of a chicken and egg situation. Um, because, in a way, I want to say sorry to God, first of all, in confession. And yet that follows the peace. So what do I need to do to say peace to my fellow man, my fellow woman and child? I need to, first of all, receive the peace of God and in Christ. This is a time, brothers and sisters, for us to experience healing in the body of Christ. Um, all the world around us can be confusing and uneasy, and we can feel very disheveled. Anger can mount in our minds and our hearts very easily. We can be short-tempered and, and frayed at the edges. And in the body of Christ, you know, we are the light of Christ in the world. So we need to be extra careful about what's going on inside us and how we look after each other. So for a moment, just take in your personal confession to God before we make it publicly in terms of offering your life back to God. All of its blemishes, like me. As you breathe out all of the rot and the stale air and the sadness and the distress, breathe in God's Holy Spirit, breathe in his love and his forgiveness and his mercy. Just a few deep breaths to allow that rot to go out and his goodness to flow in. And I hope you're now ready, if you would, with me to stand. And, and we'll do this signing of the peace. It's a sign of what is within us to share with one another in God's grace. Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. So we are to love one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. May we offer that just with a, a sign to each other now. So good. And now please sit or kneel. I feel I've already introduced this confession, so let's use the words on the screen or the sheets if we wish. Respond in the bold type. Heavenly Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross to make us whole. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our next song is 48, and it's by way of receiving God's forgiveness that we Join in these three short verses and we allow God to be God. Please remain seated.
We're going to have Ben to lead our prayers now. Thank you, Ben. Let us pray. Father of all, creator of all things, we pray for our world. We give you thanks for your creation and ask you to give us and those in governments around the world the wisdom and determination to prevent a climate emergency and to protect our planet. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the people of Pakistan after the terrorist attack on Muslims during Friday, during Friday prayers this week. We pray for the injured and bereaved and for the community that you would comfort them at this time. We pray for Ukraine. We pray for all the people there caught up in war and forced out of their homes. We pray for those around the world, worries about their loved ones in Ukraine and those who are refugees in the surrounding countries. We pray for an end to this invasion, that a peaceful solution would be found, and we pray for the, the withdrawal of the Russian troops. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church here and community, for Charles and Kath, for our ministry team, and for all who do work in the running of both churches in our benefice, all of the work, both seen and unseen. We pray for our meeting later, for Jackie as she speaks to us about our programme for the celebration weekend that we will be able to get it all planned in time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now a special prayer for Ukraine from the Archbishop. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide all their decisions. Above all, we pray for your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. We pray for those who have asked for our prayer. We pray for healing, comfort and peace. For Joan Hewlett, Malcolm Collier, Bridget Adams, Paul Herring, Pauline March, Mary Floyd, Michael Collingbourne, Martin Keir, Vic Lee, Jean Rogers, for Sylvia Brookmeyer, Claude Well, Sheila Robinson, and Simon and Angela Audrey. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Many thanks, Ben. Join in the um, here in the collect now. Heavenly Father, your Son battled with the powers of darkness and grew closer to you in the desert. Help us to use these days to grow in wisdom and prayer, that we may witness to your saving love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And it's time for our first reading. Thank you, Joan. The 
The reading is taken from Romans chapter 10, verses 8 to 13. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. If you just bear with me, I knew I'd left something behind and it's in the vestry, my Bible. Wait me a moment. So I'm reading from Luke chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. Would you please stand? Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory be to you, Lord. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the desert where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor, for it has been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want to. So if you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully, and they will lift you in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, it says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all his tempting, he left him until an opportune time. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Please be seated. Lips, hearts, and hands. Let's pray that they'll all glorify God. Lord, we're using our ears to hear a word that our hearts and our minds might be filled with what you want us to know. So that our words and our actions 
may flow in your will and with your grace. So help us, we pray, in these next minutes. Amen. just wanted to remind you of where my statement comes from that I've just made, that we are to have lips and heart and hands working together. I see in Romans chapter 10, and uh, verse 8 there, what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. And uh, what Paul is doing is he's quoting from the Old Testament and we find in Deuteronomy, in that book of the law, we find these words in chapter 13. Now what I'm commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. It is not up in heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it and to proclaim it to us so that we may obey it. Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so that we may obey it. No. The word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart, so that you may obey it. There is something for us here in the midst of a crisis time in the world, which is just central to us standing firm. And that is that we know God through Christ by faith. It, it sounds simple and it, it's designed to be that anybody who calls on the name of the Lord is saved. And that means when we make Jesus Christ Lord. If you look at the passage in Romans, I don't know how many of you have been able to grab a Bible, but it's there in chapter 10, verse 9 there of chapter 10 in Romans. Yeah, in my little book, I've got the same little Bible as your red ones, it's page 1137. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So in this chapter of Romans 10, we have from verse 4, how we are made right with God. Do you see it there? Christ is the end of the law, so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. So Paul has been arguing, it's not through what you earn by your good deeds that gets you Jesus, that makes you arrive in a place of rightness with God. It's actually by having faith in what Christ has done. In other words, Christ is our redeemer. He's gone to the cross to pay the price for all the sin of the world. And he has risen from the dead. So he's actually given the word to death and destruction and evil to say, you will not reign. God is God forever. And Jesus has promised to come back again and in that moment to be judge of the world, to put every wrong right. And so he has given us in the latter chapters of each synoptic gospel plenty to look out for in the last days. Are you recognizing the signs of the times with me? There will be rumors of war, there will be earthquakes and floods and famines. And then for the church, that men and women will accuse you and neglect God's word. 
and you will be, yes, under persecution as church. That, that is the promise um, before Jesus comes again. So in that context, we see Ukraine, we see the um, conflicts in the world at the moment, and we see the state of the church in the West particularly. And we, we are conscious here, yeah, materialism, secularism, it's all doing its work. We're preparing for a celebration weekend in which we're going to be rising up as God's people here in Stapleton. We're not going to be bowed down and crushed over by the pandemic or by the fact that we've all still got a lot of lameness about us and disability, frankly, after such a long time that we've not been able to hold events. We're going to rise up and we're going to invite this community to come among us because we've got something good to share. And it's about peace, it's about the knowledge of the presence of Jesus in our lives, something that's so precious to share. And if this whole edifice has got a beautiful roof over it, that's no good unless we're reaching out and we're enabling people to come in and to find Jesus. So it's a time for our personal spiritual renewal is Lent. I hope that you'll make that yours. I'm going on now to Luke. So I've outlined in the Romans passage how lips and heart and actions work together when we have faith in Jesus as Lord. As we come to the Luke passage, we see Satan trying to twist God's word and we see a huge hypocrisy, do we not? As Satan uses God's word to describe in that last section of verses 9 to 12 the taking of Jesus to Jerusalem and saying, well, get up to the highest pinnacle of the temple, throw yourself off. You know, it says in God's word, his angels will support you. And of course, Jesus has an apt word um, that is in context here. It is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Hypocrisy is easily spotted today because we have, in most parts of the world, a journalistic press. Yes, up for Nick Beek and others like him, who are doing their best to highlight what is going on. I know we're all biased in one way or another. There's always going to be a stream that it comes through, but we need lots of different voices being prepared to balance that for us in our freedom of press. But today, with social media, Russians, thank the Lord, are able to key into a global communications network which will show them that all that is on the national media is not all there is to hear. So we need to pray that those airwaves remain open for them to gather a wider truth. And what about our church? You know, we can say, oh, we had a wonderful Bible study on Thursday morning. We really got into God's word and I felt so strong and buoyed up. But if that was last week, what about today? Jesus says, ask for your daily bread. So we need that every day to be into God's word. We can't just rely on yesterday's or last week's bread. And also, if we're going to treat God's word like it can just be put under the spotlight of our filters, that our culture and our secular world has arrived at, and say, well, wherever it's sort of in tune with that, we'll go along with it. But where it deviates, then we're going to leave it behind then do you see that we're doing actually the same process as Satan is doing in that second of his temptations of Jesus today? He's saying, I can give you authority. I own these things. I can let you have them if you want. 
In other words, he's saying that he's in control and that, you know, Jesus can have the worship um, that he wants, but once Satan's given him the power and the dominion and the authority. So we need to be clear when, as a church, we're dealing with God's word and we're talking about current issues, what are we going to do with God's word? Are we going to say, well, only through the fault filter of what is acceptable to our current world and society will we believe and follow your word or will we take it for what it is as it's read plainly and filter the world and society through that see I'm summarising now God wants us to know him personally that may seem way out. Almighty God, creator God, God of the universes, God of the systems that we can't even reach yet. God of the creator of the eye, such a complex part of the human body. How can I know him? Well, we're told that this is God's will, that the people on earth should not remain without a witness, comfortless, lost, but that we should find God. I wonder whether, you know, you often hear the words of Jeremiah 29, um, my will is to give you a comfort and a hope um, in these days, but what about chapter 31 and verse 33 this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time declares the Lord I'll put their law in their, my law in their minds and write it on their hearts I will be their God and they will be my people no longer will a man teach his neighbour or a man his brother saying know the Lord because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest so we have this in the gospel. We have this in the epistles. Jesus can be found today. And this is the ultimate gift that we long for everybody who comes into this church community to experience. That we are an open book, a living letter. Each of our lives has got testimony to how God has been personally working. And so this Lent, I'm calling us to renew that seriously, to, to seek that we may know afresh what it is to have Jesus as Lord. Every department of our lives, just to give that over to him. All the doubts and fears that we carry as burdens at these times of great distress. To say, Jesus, be Lord. Jesus be Lord. When we see it on the news, when we hear it on the radio, just commit that situation saying, Christ, you are the risen Lord. You are able. And may we ourselves take care of that place in our lives where we are susceptible. I don't know what it is for you. Where are you liable to get angry, impatient? Where are you liable to throw aside what you have embraced for years and years? To neglect what you have known of disciplines that have been helpful? May I encourage you to be rooted again this Lent to be such that when we are able to bring people into this place there is great fruitfulness people would just say yes I want to be part of that being among you Christians is so lovely because you're all just on fire with a passion for God's love to be shared you're really active and you're really prayerful and that's what I think being a Christian should be and, and we'll find people are drawn 
and people grow here in this fellowship. So let's pray. Lord, we indeed want our lips and hearts and hands to grow in ever more consistency with each other. What we say with our lips, we may believe in our heart. What we believe in our heart, we may put into action in our lives. For Jesus' sake. Amen. We have the creed up on the screen. Thank you very much. Please stand with me and if you wish, declare your faith in Christ. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death even death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. The 23rd Psalm is one of those that's so refreshing. He restores my soul. He leads me beside quiet waters. His rod and his staff comfort me. He anoints my head with oil. Surely I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's this version of Crimin that can sometimes get us, and it takes us back to a funeral situation. But please, we're here among our friends in the family of God. Let this minister to your soul. Number 660.
just to explain how it works when we offer the administration of Holy Communion. Um, we invite you to take your turn to come to um, the desk here just to stand and if you just wish for a prayer blessing do cross your arms over your chest. If you just want the bread please have a hand up like that and we'll place the bread in the other one. Um, otherwise if you just come with a, a handful then we'll have dipped the bread in the wine and we'll place it on your hand. All are welcome to the Lord's table. And may I, uh, on behalf of the church, thank you for your offerings. The card reader is available at the end, or a donations bowl if you prefer. But thank you for all your generosity. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All we come, come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who has sent by you in your great goodness, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Savior. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh, and as your son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, for ever praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take. Eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying in the story of our death, rising in the story of our life, Lord Jesus Christ, the glory. And so, Father, according to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ.
Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Do we are many. We are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
Lord God, you have renewed us with the living bread from heaven. By it, we nourish our faith, increase our hope, and strengthen our love. Teach us always to hunger for him who is the true and living bread, and enable us to live by every word that proceeds from out of your mouth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we join in the prayer of thanksgiving after communion together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Just as we come again to that hymn 896, would you turn it up a moment? I just want to talk you through something. You notice that when we sang it at the beginning, it was to get our limbs moving, our spiritual limbs moving. My lips shall praise you, we sang. I wonder if we could just, instead of the first person singular, use the first person plural throughout every time. So when, when we have our lips shall praise you, our great redeemer, we're thinking of those Christians around the world, aren't we? You are the restorer of our soul. And in the chorus again, our lips shall praise you. You can just look through and see where it comes. Instead of when I am in distress in the last verse, when we are in distress, you are the restorer of our soul. Let's stand and sing.
just again say do stay on. Um, you know, even if you're not normally um, here, please do feel free to find out about our celebration weekend if you'd like to and stick around. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among us and with all whom we love now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.